and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I am doing a live stream painting on Twitch and uploading it to YouTube at a later date. Um, now with the live stream videos, there is some talking on the side if somebody comes into the live chat. So don't be alarmed if I suddenly start seeming like I'm talking to myself. Also, um, unfortunately, I can't really pause the video during any dry-offs, but I will try to um, withhold that aspect, or at least, you know, limit the, limit the use of the blow dryer. So in front of me, I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. This is 140 pound. It is um, cold press and it is my favorite paper to use. So I'm just super saturating it with a large Ron Ranson hake brush and then we'll get started. I really don't have an idea for what I want to paint. I just um, kind of filmed the second part of the experiment with the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. And to be honest, it's just a little exhausting because there's just a lot of stuff to cover and a lot of things to keep in mind. And I feel like I didn't even scratch the surface of the potential or the negatives, you know, positives, pros and cons of that product. So let's just sit back, paint and have fun. I'm gonna make up the scene as we go along and We'll listen to the gentle sounds of Hammy scratching boxes in the corner every time he's got to climb up there. Grabbing some ultramarine, a little bit of Payne's Gray is catching into that, but we'll allow that to happen. Thinking we should do an interior stream maybe a swamp or something. And if that's the case, we're going to paint from the back forward. I believe this is some indigo right here that I'm grabbing into this watery mix. Let's throw that up there. We'll do a simple S-shaped composition in the middle. And when I do this, I'm flattening out. Paper, let me move my camera just a little bit. Flattening out the paper. Let's grab some raw sienna. this and this will be our far background brush and not painting a brush you know like foliage of our water is going to come here and it's going to go there. Okay, next our paint's gray. Mix that with that raw sienna. You can see how saturated this paper is and how everything is feeding towards the middle. Use this to shape my edge a little bit. Even though I'm painting 
back to front and making up this scene. I do like to work that foreground and land a bit so that I maintain um, just the wet paper everywhere. some burnt sienna and we'll grab the number four rigger Grab some Payne's gray and some dark on it. And I'll use that for some tall, wet and wet tree trunks. Guys, what y'all doing? The cats are making a whole bunch of noises. Hammy! No? I'm gonna go pretty linear pattern with this. I'm just gonna kind of go up across right there. And on this other side, oh, that's a little, way too much ultramarine blue. Some burnt sienna mixed into that. Pool of water right there. I'm gonna push it around now. Let's see what I can do with it to prevent the cauliflowering and edges. I'll push it around as if it was foliage coming forward. In fact, let's just go ahead and feed in some lemon yellow into that. us oh, we got some burnt sienna on here still grab some Payne's gray Structuring some undergrowth. The underside of these guys. I can even grab a paper towel. And paper towel right here. Pull some water out of the brush. And use that to kind of mop up some of this what are those closing issues flatten everything out there we go now does anybody know where the number one, there it is number one rigger just like the number four rigger can layer wet and wet tree trunks. Really not too concerned with their placement. They're just to create that background effect. And it will build up over time. I'm gonna grab some light red oxide just for variety. Put that in 
wet and wet. For the heck of it, let's grab some alizarin and feed that as well. Kind of just all over the place, so I usually say, hey, you are more than welcome to follow along with any of these tutorials, but this one is so random, it might be a little bit difficult to follow. Number. I'm trying to add more pigment to my mix. Nice. Okay. Malice of truth. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Yep. I got um, my big old hake brush that I love to use. Hammy the cat has his head underneath a burlap, not a burlap sack, but like a, a bag that's folded over, and he's hiding his head underneath it, and Percy is trying to bug him. Yeah, I mean, what you doing? I really need to get a second camera on these feeds, just on the cats. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, these crazy brushes have, you know, just that unique life of their own and can't be replicated. Yeah, cat cam is definitely needed, without a doubt. This one I've had for about two years. This is my main painting brush with application and texture and whatnot. I just, um, I filmed a, a follow-up review of the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. It's kind of like a gesso for watercolor. And that video felt so frantic that I was like, I just need to paint. And now I feel like I'm still in that frantic mode. Like I haven't mellowed out yet. As you can tell by having like all these brushes in my hand and paper towel, etc. Alright, let's grab we'll go with the raw sienna and I'll mix ultramarine blue in. And that's why we have these crazy brushes. Right, Hammy? Yeah, uh, that's um, a very, uh, I guess it's, it's a difficult transition with painting, especially painting fast and loose where there's the frantic aspect that you have at first because you think you're running against a time limit and um, you're trying to handle the wet and wet, or at least this was for me, all over the place. But once you get to the stage where you're painting fast and loose, but mellow and chill, it really is you know, very fun.
This painting looks like a bowl of fruity pebbles so far <laughs> with all these colors. I think one of the things is um, I spent last week uh, hand making a skateboard deck, a longboard deck, and I chronicled that. And then at the same time, I was just kind of doing other reviews and experiments. And I haven't done a full painting until since I think the last painting that you were for, here for, which was the Basinski painting. So it's been over a week since I've painted painted. And that um, throws me off. I feel like I'm somebody that needs to paint every day. I've been so busy. Tomorrow, we take the boys and girls powerlifting team to state. Boys compete on Thursday and girls compete Friday. So um, we'll see how that goes. Kind of the culmination of that whole year of training these kids. The boys are seated first. Uh, the girls are seated second. They're trying to draw at least something every day. It really does help. Yeah, just practicing really does just help, you know. I have uh, um, some drawing paper cut up and prepared and some fountain pen ink that I'm going to bring with me and my fountain pens so I can... Uh, draw while I'm there. I hope that doesn't make me a bad coach. It's just those competitions will last easily um, you know, 12 plus hour days. And the guy I coach with will be like, we gotta get there at 6.30 in the morning and lifting will start at 10 maybe. So, so we're just kind of there. Our kids have already weighed in and made weight and whatnot, so it'll be, you know, a lot of downtime. You can only listen to high school kids talk so much. But yeah, so boys are seated first, a close first. And um, girls are seated second. Um, I'll be honest. This isn't like me being like, oh, I don't have faith in the girls. We're going up against, we, there's going to be like 20-something teams there, but it's pretty much two or three teams that score all the points. It'll be us, one other team, and um, like, like two other teams that are the point scorers. And the main team... Uh, Lutcher has been state champions for 14 years in a row and just looking at the numbers we know that they're gonna they're gonna take first it's gonna be a first, good competition it'll be our first time going up against them and we're friends with the coaches like we've known them since the beginning so um, so it'll be fun competing against you know people we're friends with boys so, yeah, you know, we're friends with um, those coaches as well. So it's always fun. And, you know, it's a trying year with COVID and all that other stuff. Yeah, 14 years. And um, they've... The girls on that current team, I believe some of them have been to uh, high school worlds. I think they have high school worlds or junior worlds. I think uh, two years ago, some of them went to South Africa to compete, which is really amazing. It's you know, it's an awesome sport, and the things that this does for some kids, and that's any sport, any activity, whether it's uh, speech, 
um, track, band. You know, it, it's all good for um, you know a kid rather than going home and taking a nap. Which I'm guilty of, but <laughs> a lot of kids have that mentality. You'll ask them what their hobby is, and they'll be like, "Oh, my favorite hobby is going home and napping." I like to watch TV and nap, and it's just kind of like sad because I think sometimes that's true. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have painting and skateboarding and coaching and all that other stuff. I think, um, if I remember correctly, it said you're from Houston. Did you all get that bad weather yet that's supposed to come through? Because we're supposed to drive through some of that tomorrow, I think. Oh yeah, the amount of people, I always looked at the whole quarantine thing as, you know, like people not having hobbies, where people were going to come out of it like a weird video game character, where you have a character that's good at like reading a foreign language, they can also, um, you know, fight with a sword, and they could also, um, I don't know, throw a boomerang, you know. Like, weird skills should have came out of the COVID lockdown. That being said, I had spent the beginning of my COVID lockdown painting, and there was some bicycle riding. I had broken my toe about a month before the lockdown. I dropped a 45-pound plate on it, and I continued lifting on it. And um, it just hurt for about a month or two into the quarantine. The Midwest US, pretty decent weather here. Yeah, there's supposed to be like some hurry, um, tornado type events going through um, like Texas and Arkansas and places like that. I think today, tomorrow and Thursday in Louisiana. What was your uh, quarantine activity? Sienna. Oh, you didn't get to quarantine, work full time. Oh man. Um, for me, it was March thirteenth, and they shut down the schools down here. But you still had a job, yeah. So that's that's good. That's the good thing about being a school teacher is we had the job security where everything shut down, but I was fortunately, you know, still getting paid. Um, unfortunately for a lot of people that didn't take place. And I can imagine in the beginning of the virus, it must have been pretty um, nerve wracking going into work because you didn't 
We didn't know then what we knew now. I mean, I'm still... I had COVID, and I still absolutely hate it, and I don't want anybody to get it. But back then, it was I felt like I was even more fearful. If you don't mind me asking, did you work in the, um, the medical field? Uh, you must have been in, or something like that, considered... Um, You know, like a like a supermarket or something like that. You didn't have too many people coming in. That's good. So you supply first responders. Did you all have to do a lot of um, PPE type stuff? I thought that was like absolutely crazy and not to like talk politics or anything like that, just to kind of talk in general about how governors and mayors and all that wanted you know, equipment for their state. They wanted funding for their state or their city. And they were almost bickering like feudal warlords, you know, trying to get supplies for their own um, people. It was a really kind of weird, weird thing that was taking place. Oh, you made masks for them, yeah. No, a lot of people made masks, and I wish somebody would have came out with, or I never saw an advertisement one, a mask for somebody with like a big beard. Because I'll try to get it on screen. Like I have a huge beard. You won't be able to see it on screen. And regular masks are very difficult for me to wear. I mean, I always wear a mask, but we have to design that. Okay, so you had to design it from scratch. That's cool. I'm just uh, building up my darks. I feel like I'm getting a glare somewhere in the top left. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad you were looking after your friend. And it made, made it so. Yeah, a little bit of a glare. It's this, it's this light right here, I think. Yes, bearded guys. We uh, we were put in a pickle. No, it's not this light. I'm just taking a large quantity of uh, lemon yellow mixed onto it. Should mix it with kind of an earth tone. There we go. Let's get some raw sienna tree trunks in there just start getting a lot of variety.
But yeah, so I had, um, I think a lot of people I knew wound up making their own masks. And um, when we went back to school, some of the home ec teachers had the kids make their own masks, um, which was pretty cool. I think a lot of people picked up hobbies and picked up um, little side hustles and side jobs, things like that. Do I use hot press or cold press? I use cold press. This is um, Stonehenge Aqua 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton. I used to use Arches Rough, um, and I used to buy the pads. And then from there, I experimented with like kind of mid-range uh, large sheets. Because a large sheet of arches is about six, seven dollars. Uh, mid-range, I would say, would be about four dollars. Um, and there were some that were at the six-dollar range that weren't as good as arches. And this at the four-dollar range. And 100% cotton, I think is just absolutely just fantastic. They make a line of drawing papers as well, and I have sheets of that. Um, I don't know. I just I just really like this brand. I'm not like sponsored by them or anything. Not that it, you know. And I just go on to Blick or uh, Jerry's Artorama and I order it. The large sheets and packs of 10. I used to sit down and cut all the papers to size and like truly maximize the sheet of paper but now I literally just stand up and fold the paper a few times in half and then I'll um, tear it into 11 by 15. It's not a perfect tear but being underneath a mat it works. And then I've come up with a way to get six sheets of um, eight by tens out of it pretty easily. I should make a video of that. What paper are you currently using? And do you know what material it's out of? I, if I remember correctly, I think you had said that you used acrylic and you were moving over to watercolor. I apologize, I'm trying to remember previous conversations that I've had with people. I have to do a dry off, so just watch your ears real quick. Me a paper, usually it's acrylic, colored pencil, or digital, but I like a watercolor in the background. Or colored pencil really helps fill in the larger spaces or makes things in the background blurrier to show distance. Yeah. 
Um, a lot of people have been posting on the painting pages right now that Michael's Art Supply has like buy one get one for arches or the pads are half off. I would really recommend spending the money and getting 100% cotton paper. Whether it's Arches, Canson, or, um, or like I said, Stonehenge Aqua. Uh, Strathmore makes it. There's the Moulin Du Roy or something, but I'm not really the biggest fan of that. But it's a, it's a huge not noticeable difference. And um, it'll really help you out. I was actually um, playing with, since you said you use acrylic and you like the effects of watercolor. Um, so I had mentioned how I had done a review video right before this of um, Daniel Smith Watercolor Ground. It's a, um, like a gesso type primer, but it's absorbent and it works for watercolor. And there's other brands that make it, like uh, probably Golden or Schmincke. And I think they make a clear one, or at least a few of those brands make a clear ground for watercolor. And somebody in a comment section on a previous video had said that they'll take an, an acrylic painting, put on, yeah, you could coat, coat the whole paper with it, yeah. Um, they'll coat an acrylic painting with it and then do watercolor effects on top of an acrylic. But then they, you have to use a sealer because you're painting with um, watercolor. I, I wouldn't recommend getting the watercolor ground though just for um, covering paper. I would get pure watercolor paper to start with. I'm still experimenting with the watercolor ground, um, and it's a uh, it's a little overwhelming. It's a different um, surface painting on it. Oh yeah, metallic watercolors. Um, what brand uh, do you have metallic wise? I was playing with um, Van Gogh brand, their metallic paints, and I had mixed some in my, um, I was cleaning my brush, and the swirls that it made in the um, water pot was just really cool. Oh, homemade ones are very cool. Yeah, there's a lot of different um, art supplies on Etsy, it's amazing. Um, there's a, another fast and loose painter. Uh, she's from England, Lois Davidson. She's been making her handmade paints as well, and I think putting them on her um, Etsy page. I think her Etsy page is like Bird and Owl or something. I'm not sure. And it's good uh, supporting, you know, small artists and people like that. So that's cool. Hey, Soupmaster, how's it going? Soupmaster is from um, Germany. How am I doing? I am doing pretty good. Just trying to like find my flow and kind of mellow out in the painting today. Just been a little frantic. But any time spent, painting is a good time. And I think uh, Malice was here when Soup was here last time too, so that's cool. My painting's become very foreground heavy, so I'm just playing with um, different textures.
I don't think Soup Master paints, but I know Soup Master knows artists, right? Oh, that's really kind of you. I have um I have this medium that I actually want to try. It's an iridescent medium, which I think would mimic the effect of um the metallic paints. Do you remember the name of like the um, the seller that you got it from? Uh, thank you, uh, Suit Master. Yeah, I was really just trying to th build up density. I might even come across the front. I don't know. I mean, it, it would kind of stop the eye from going back. We could probably really push into a small part if I want to. Hydrocolor. Okay, cool. I'll check that out. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, uh, Soup Master, earlier Malice was talking about how um, they've been trying to paint, uh, sorry, draw every day. Um, just to like get the art flowing and just to relax. I need to update my Etsy page. I have some stuff on there, but it's older stuff. I've been so focused on growing like the YouTube channel and um, the Patreon and all that other stuff that it gets to be a bit much between between coaching, between tutoring and all that, it's just, it's a lot. I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm, it's, it's so far it's been beyond successful. Like I've been having a great time. And the other day, um, it was really cool. There's a painting page. I don't know if it's called like painting videos on Facebook. And somebody shared one of my videos on there and I was like oh check out this uh, tonalist painter um, and had said oh he doesn't get enough subscribers as he should something like that and um, any watercolors or paints in the style of Stuart Davies and Stuart Davies who I'm friends with on Facebook and have you know kind of commented back and forth he's like an amazing painter and like super youtuber painter he um i guess clicked on the link and watched the painting and said thank you for the shout out because i always mention him so that was really i guess a fanboy moment yeah um the subscriber count is like jumping up on YouTube. Um, I it hit two thousand on like t today's Tuesday, and my mom, who's like my biggest fan, I don't know if I'm just gonna put this on the Patreon, but if I put this on YouTube, she'll watch it. So I'll just say, "Hey, mom, if you made it to this point, I love you and thank you for being my biggest fan, mom." I, <laughs> but. Um, she messaged me uh, Saturday and was like, 2,000 subscribers. So she saw it before I did. You know, she was watching the count. And um, today I think it's at 2,100. So it's like, it jumped 100 in one, two, three days. Which, um, which is really cool. 
it's like any time my degrees my background's math and physics and anytime i try to like make a speculation on like the growth of the channel or what i should um expect it, it starts blowing me out the water but to be fair i did start the channel two years ago so it did take two years to get to this point but now it's growing exponentially Yeah, I know the algorithm is really weird. Like, I wonder who sits there and figures that out and writes that. Because I have some videos that have like 6,000 views and I have no idea why. And then there's some times where I'll post a video to YouTube and almost immediately there'll be a comment um, like linking to like an inappropriate like thing, which I think is common on YouTube, like spam posts. But I was almost thinking that's almost a good thing because I'm showing up on somebody's radar or some algorithm's radar for that to happen. <laughs> Oh, YouTube recommends videos of channels that upload often. I upload a lot. And one day you'll have to be honest with me and be like, listen, Andrew, you're uploading too much. <laughs> so if that gets to that point, be like, don't be afraid to be like, I just dude mellow out. <laughs> Like my foliage isn't really popping out. I'm gonna grab that little blue. Grab burnt umber. Start playing with foliage type texture. Uh, what do you learn when you study art at a university? Okay, I think I remember we might have talked about this in the past, Soupmaster. Um, there's, let's see. You'll have a lot of different classes and you'll have different um, professors and the different professors will focus on different things. You know, you might have an introductory class where you'll do a uh, drawing, pen and ink, charcoal, and you'll talk about, um, you know, you'll talk about different aspects. You'll talk about tonal value and stuff like that. Um, you'll have another one where you'll go through exercises where you might paint the person next to you while they paint you and things like that. Um, you might have a class that spends one week exploring um, making things look heavy, you know, th th sculpture type stuff while making small objects or different things like that. So there's like a whole bunch of different classes and approaches and I kind of just like did it for fun because I was doing my degrees in math and physics and um, it was to kind of you know keep me somewhat sane and but I think we had talked about university 
or at least I did with somebody. And one of my biggest things was, and this isn't to discourage anybody from going into art. This is unfortunately just to get you thinking. We're going through a pandemic right now. And think about what type of jobs and job security there was out there. And, um, you know, what people were able to stay afloat and whatnot. And I hate to say it like that. Um, but, you know, something that you, you want to consider. And if you go to university for art, you may, let's say, let's say you really like drawing um, fairies sitting on mushrooms. That's totally fine if that's like your thing. But also be open to uh, graphic design, um, the, you know, using the computer imaging, things like that, so that you can have a job in the art field. You know, you're more likely to get a job doing something like that, digital art, while still doing what you enjoy on the side. For me, being a school teacher, and this is a big thing, this is something that my uncle, my uncle Mike, big shout out to like him, he was like, you know, you should go into teaching. And that was always my plan because I have a lot of hobbies. And, you know, people always say, oh, teachers have summers off and things like that. And they have a lot of vacation. And we do. You know, we also work a lot, but we do have a lot of free time comparatively. And I wouldn't be able to do all these things if I wasn't a school teacher. I don't make a lot, but I can have this time to paint on a Tuesday night. While he's in, um, you know, a CPA, you know, accounting firm. And right now he's working 80 hours a week. So he can't be a person that has a hobby like this. So also kind of keep that in mind. I don't know if that really answers your question. And um, it might make things even more stressful deciding what you want to go to college for or university. But um, you know, just keep that in mind, just be aware of that. Place some lemon yellow kind of all over. But I think Malice, you're in your like high school year, right? You're still deciding what you want to go to college for, and what you want to do. And I know you're being in Germany. I don't know how the um university system works there if they um, if it's government funded or how that works and you might want to um, if you if you want to do art you could also look into studying abroad there's really nothing with diving in like that oh yeah yeah you get different classes that teach different stuff without a doubt I have a f physics student he graduated last year and he um, messaged me and you know a physics student good at math things like that and he the whole time he talked about wanting to go to Japan and learn Japanese take the classes there and he messaged me and he got in and you know that's his goal in life and something like that has a lot of you know first of all you know he was driven to do that and a lot of value to it the streams loading I was having trouble the other day with the stream where it just kind of stopped so hopefully I'm not Hopefully it's still filming.
just taking that Payne's gray and just trying to apply it. Very happy, uh, heavy. Yeah, um, Japanese, and he um, got into the program, and he might actually start out in the second year of the program. So I know he's been practicing it. His handwriting was quite terrible, and I gave him a fountain pen, and the fountain pen um, actually helped his handwriting. Then I have another friend who's studying abroad in Thailand, like film production, of all things. And he's learning Taiwanese and all that. And he also does watercolor. He's been learning that and drawing. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's that's absolutely right, Malice. And I think Malice might agree. It's it's hard to it's hard to see what we're kind of talking about until you experience it. I am like forty, thirty or forty thousand dollars in debt from college, and that's because high school Andrew, you know, signed up for that and didn't really know about all that stuff. And I'm sure people could talk. Could have talked to me till they were blue in the face about it, but until I ex experienced it, you know, there's really nothing I could have done. Yeah. I don't know if you, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, like ex explaining to the high school mind, just that preparation and all that. And, um, just the monthly note that you'd be paying. The good thing right now, um, is that they, they postponed the federal loans in America for the student loans until September currently. So it's at 0% interest, so I haven't been paying off at on it because mine's been so low. I've just been kind of saving that money in the um, savings account. <laughs> Let's talk to Soup Master about finances. <laughs> Let's set up a financial plan for Soup Master. <laughs> Oh wow, that's great. Um, this summer, I think my loan that I took three years ago to pay off just like medical bill, uh, those type of things, that one should be done this summer. And then I would still have my car note and the student loans. And that would be my only two. Yeah, and those stimulus checks, I mean, if you're working and you're having that money come in, rather than spending it on, like, TVs and stuff like that, paying off loans, that'd be great. I'm looking for a lavender. Do I have a lavender out?
the other day I organized all my paints and of course now I can't find any of them. Why would I have put that away? Yeah, well, why don't we just play with this? I have some cadmium orange U that I haven't used before. Let's just open that up and play with it. What pigment is it? PY83, so I guess, and PO43. I don't know those offhand. I'll just pick up some of that crazy brush. Yeah, and um, I would like to, because interest rate I can't believe it. <laughs> interest rates are so low right now. <laughs> I'd like to actually look into buying a house. You know, with with the job security of the teacher, you know, being a teacher, seeing what I pay monthly for rent. Um. I'm always helping people move and I'm always helping people like replace things like uh, hot water heaters and stuff like that that seems to go out for everybody so I've been learning just all that through helping friends out so I'm kind of seeing all that whole aspect of home ownership and um, all the misery that goes into it and <laughs> I think I'm ready to do it Yeah, um, I, with that, like, if interest rates go up, that would, I don't know, what would the, the logic be? It would be, it would lower the spending, but put more money into, um, paying off the, the federal debt, I guess. Because I guess all the interest rates are based off of the, f the federal interest rate, right? That kind of number. And I think it, what, hit zero at the beginning of the, um, the pandemic. I really don't know how that works. But right now, I think interest rates are at, well, let's just say, 3% for buying houses. I think I had a friend refinance at um, like 2%. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's the logic. Um, I think an interesting take on it is this, is that um, the lower class, and this isn't to be derogatory or negative towards people in lower class because I'm kind of, I guess, middle of lower class, we're going to kind of spend just as much as we did during the pandemic as we did when there isn't a pandemic taking place. So that money that we spend is still going out there. I, I think it's the people that are kind of upper class that aren't spending as much. So they aren't being encouraged to spend. And I think that's in theory who you 
need to spend. How do we splatter? Why am I playing around like that? Yeah, exactly. There's like lower class will spend money on essentials. Like I'm always going to spend money on rent, food, utilities, my car note, things like that. While upper class, I feel like maybe we're not going to buy a car for our daughter's graduation this year or um, a vacation, you know, graduation this year, things like that. Maybe graduation is going to be spent differently. Is that um, cat orange showing up in the live stream? Kind of little dots that I splattered. Kind of adds a little different aspect to it. It looks nice. look like fireflies yeah it kind of gives that whole um, fantasy glow to it that's splattering right there oh thank you yeah they're pretty subtle I once um, in a high school English class said the word subtle but I said it subtle I pronounced the B and um, it was pretty uh, <laughs> oh hey we got to hey how's it going bacon Bacon is from um, Texas. That's who I was thinking of. You're from that's Texas. We're just uh, painting and talking economics. And um, how we need the upper class to spend more money and do investments in America. <laughs> This stemmed out of, and I'm not sure if, um, let's see, I'm not sure if Suitmaster is still here. Suitmaster was talking about college plans, and that talked to, then we just started talking about a life lessons with uh, college debt. Do a cerulean blue. I think that would make it interesting with the orange. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what I was seeing was is that in 2017, Trump had his new tax plan that came out, and that tax plan was supposed to be in effect until 2025, and it was a pretty simplified tax plan. Oh, I found lavender. There we go. But rather than doing like a whole bunch of crazy exemptions, it was very simplified where you could say, okay, um, I'm taking this exemption for kids and that's it. You know, it's just a very simplified thing. And side by side with the old tax plan, when you looked at just percent based on your income, and the different uh, gradiated steps. I think Trump's plan was a little better than the previous one. I think that the one that Biden is proposing is an increase on the bracket of people that make 400,000 or more, which would be essentially um, taxing the Taxing the um, the wealthy, I guess, with the with the four hundred thousand. Used to work for a dude that is on trial for two billion tax fraud. Golly, wasn't his employees profiting? Oh man, that's. I'm dabbing lavender on there. 
Let me know what you all think about the lavender dabs. Um, while we talk about this $2 billion tax fraud, that's insane. Like, how would you not expect to get caught? That's just... The lavender, the rest of the painting feels warm. So the lavender kind of mellows it out a little bit. What did I grab? This is um, Master Touch Hobby Lobby brand, three slash zero. This is their synthetic squirrel. That's kind of funny. <laughs> I was able to feel the difference right away between that and the number one from the um, several black velvet. I got this just to see if I could make thinner lines. Just to see if it was worth it from Hobby Lobby. Just get to feel a little like, I guess, dragonflies, little bugs buzzing around back in here. We can actually put someone right in here. I could grab some white wash. We can do like another kind of wood nymph type thing. And I'll outline her. with wash and then I'll come over with color. See what happens. I don't usually do that in paintings, but I've been kind of more fantasy type stuff, just feeling it a little bit, you know? We've been re watching The Lord of the Rings and I'm watching The Hobbit for the first time. I was a big Tolkien fan and um, I love the books, love the movies. I just never watched the Hobbit movies because the first one was just uh, I want to be a, like a purist but the first one was not the book that I grew up with which I mean that's what's going to happen with any type of movie Awesome watercolors where someone made it look like a picture with very selective focus in the background. Broken up. ZZ Lai on YouTube. Well, that sounds cool. The, the talent that people have to be able to do stuff like that is just uh, amazing. I have a vermilion on my palette and mixing that with raw sienna is always a good 
skin tone. Oh yeah, they um, yeah they took the smallest book and made it into three movies. I felt like they gave it the um, Pirates of the Caribbean treatment, and um, with the Hobbit, before we went to go see it, uh, me and my friend Chris, we grew up together up in New York. And he came down to visit me, and we actually like went into the movie theater to see it. I don't like the way this is coming out. Let me erase that. I'm going to have to approach it again. We went and saw it, and uh, we made all sorts of predictions. In the book, there's literally no female character in The Hobbit at all. Um, and, of course... You know, they, they're going to add female uh, characters in it, which is nothing wrong with having female characters. It's just the book had no female characters and had no human characters in it besides Bard. So what they do, they made Thorin, the king of the dwarves, look like a human. And then love interests, they have that weird love interest between the... Uh, the dwarf. Oh, sorry if I'm giving away spoilers. I apologize. Feeling low key, Narnia. Thank you. Um, you know, between the dwarf and the elven woman. Some of the dwarves didn't even have beards. And it's like, that's literally what dwarves do is have beards. I wonder if I should just turn that into a butterfly. I'm having trouble shaping it as a person I like that. Yeah, I'm going to change it to a butterfly. And I'll put some other butterflies in there. Sorry, I was going on a rant about The Hobbit, <laughs> the movie. Yeah, you're right. You know, they didn't need it. To just add a woman for love interest. I even felt like the guy that played Bard looks like Orlando Bloom in um, Pirates of the Caribbean. There, I said it. <laughs> I know these are kind of large, but are they registering as butterfly type feel to them? put the orange in there okay so very butterfly I don't know if they fit in the piece or not but I'm just having fun we still haven't watched the third Hobbit movie <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so the, the the lavender does add a sense of depth to it. What I could do is 
Let's the very foreground. That's like almost dead center, but. Yeah, smog better not fall in love. Wait, what was it? Um, was it the movie with the ogre, Smash Mouth? Hey, now you're an all star. What 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 show was that? It was animated Disney. Yeah, Shrek. Didn't the dragon like fall in love with like the donkey, or the donkey fall in love with? I guess they fell in love with each other. I think that there might have been a donkey in the second Hobbit movie, so we'll see if they make another appearance. And for those of you that remember the Hobbit movie, the first one, the Goblin King sounded and acted like John Goodman. <laughs> the actor. So we got little butterflies. Let's let us go along that edge. That dark kind of help that pop forward a little bit. I've been meaning to do some uh, flower paintings. I haven't painted flowers in a while. You always convinced John Goodman died and that is never true. I think John Goodman had some health troubles but um, made it past that and I think there were some unfortunate like alcoholism and stuff like that but I think he he, he made it through that and um, lost uh, some unhealthy weight that he had on him <laughs> there's been so many movies playing around with lemon yellow up in these corners. I usually leave the sides darker, but usually, I guess this is what you take when, what happens when you take fast and loose painting and you push it to probably at an hour and a half right now, I'm assuming. Does it say how long the stream's been going for? say on here? No, it doesn't say. Hour 20. I have a splat of paint right over my screen. No, 125. Good, good. 
Thank you. Yeah, you start, I guess, to learn when you paint so much how much time has passed and what stage you're at. Like this is at kind of like the tickling stage for me. And if I'm at this point, then, um, yeah. If I was filming it just for YouTube and wasn't like kind of hanging out on Twitch talking, I would have uh, ended it sooner. Unless it was a commission painting. And commission paintings will take around this time as well. Mainly because I'm painting something for somebody and I'm kind of you know, self-conscious and concerned and I want to make sure that it's a good painting. It's always stressful when somebody has a commission or wants a commission. That's a lot. Let me stand up. Ugh. Hey, Hammy. bit of other blue in there. Yeah. I had one commission which was great. Um, a co-worker had asked for a painting of Central Park with a lonely a lonely girl in Central Park. And I was like, well you know, I grew up in New York, on Long Island. I've been to Central Park a few times. It's not empty. You know, you're not going to have like a just a lonely person. So I, I painted Central Park and I put a whole bunch of figures and people in it. And um, everybody was in pairs of twos or threes or, you know, flying kites and all that and having fun. And then I put the woman in color by herself. And that's how I did a lonely girl in Central Park by having all the excitement around her and she was the only one without something going on. So that was pretty fun. And that was just, you know, like made up, you know, top of the head. Hey, Percy. You want to say hi? Want to say hi to everybody, Percy? Figure it's about time Percy makes an appearance. What do you think, Percy? Yeah. This is my baby. Percy, everybody says hi. Everybody says hi, Percy. Let me move this on the side. Let me, let me get Percy up here. Usually Percy's like all over me. She's my favorite. And I'm her favorite. She, um... Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Just don't knock into the camera. Percy Poo. Not that you know what a camera is. You're just gonna wag your butt in people's faces. Okay, that's we gotta not let you watch the TV. <laughs> okay, so let's put a mat over this. See what it looks like. I think I'm gonna start wrapping this up. When we first adopted her, she would just wake me up all night, just like sitting on my chest, like coming to give me like kisses and all that. It was like fantastic because I've never had a kitten or a dog. 
yeah, it's it's bud time <laughs> with cats. And I never had a kitten or a dog run it growing up. So um, finally being able to experience that as a grown adult, a grown man with a kitten, it, uh, it was really awesome. Okay, we'll lay it right like that. We'll turn this up. So you can kind of see the whole thing underneath the mat. It's not completely dry, but um, I think you get a good idea. So on that note, I'm going to start wrapping everything up. Um, I really appreciate y'all coming by and watching this. For those of you that watch this at a later date, whether it's on YouTube or Patreon, um, you're always welcome to follow along with one of my paintings. This one was kind of all over the place, so I don't expect you to really follow too much with it. But um, you know, you're always welcome to follow along and, and sign your name and um, sell anything you do from one of the tutorials and demos. Um, and I want you guys, you know, to be successful and all that. So you know, feel free. You have my express permission. And thanks again. And thank you, Bacon. I appreciate that. And those of you guys that hung out with me, um, it's only Tuesday, so I hope you have a good rest of your week. I will post, I'm going to post on my Patreon um, the results of my, um, of the powerlifting team, the high school teams that I coach. Uh, and I'll let you all know. Um, we'll see how many uh, individual state champions we have. And hopefully, you know, the boys will win state championship and the girls will put up a good fight for it. And yes, I'll post that on like online or next video I do, I'll talk about it. I appreciate that. Um, so y'all be safe and yeah, I, I guess that's it. Y'all be safe and take care. Right, let's, let's turn this off. All right, goodbye.